I think the right way to think about the cortex in some ways is actually as living space for the hypothalamus and the subcortical structures. So, you know, what happens when, you're, when you develop as a young child, especially in the very early stages of development, the underlying subcortical systems, including the systems for, for the senses, more or less compete for dom dominion over the cortical territory. So, for example, if you take a kitten and you close one of its eyes shortly after birth and you leave it covered for a number of months, what will happen is the, the remaining eye will invade both hemispheres' visual representation systems. So that eye becomes, the single remaining eye becomes much more acute and more cortically dominant, like an invader, really like an invader, than the other one does. And then if you uncover the other eye, the cat, after a critical period of development, the cat will never learn to see out of that eye. And so, you know, it's, you've got these underlying biological systems, motivational and sensory, and they're looking to expand themselves as the organism manifests itself in the world, and it does that by occupying cortical territory in a competitive process. So, for example, if you're deaf, your, 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 uh, your visual cortex will become occupied by auditory and tactile processing. Because why not? You know, I mean, you can basically see with your hands, you know, and you can, you can, well, I wouldn't say it's not so easy to hear with your eyes, that's harder, although you can hear to some degree with touch, right, because you can feel vibration. All of your senses overlap to a substantial degree, and if one of them is missing, it's perfectly reasonable for the others to occupy the territory that's, that would otherwise be given over to that sense. And this actually has some practical implications even. So, Silent reading is actually a relatively new ability, <coughs> evolutionarily speaking. Um, certainly literacy is a relatively new invention from an evolutionary perspective. But to, to silent read is to use your eyes as ears. So, you know, when you read silently, you can hear the words, so to speak, in your head. And the reason for that, as it turns out, is that the part of the brain that you use to read silently with is right between the visual and the auditory cortexes, right where they overlap. So you are literally, literally, you are using your eyes as ears. And so that's quite the thing, that you can, you can figure out how to do that. So, anyway, so you can think about these hypothalamic systems being in place, more or less ready to go at birth, and then having to organize themselves into a sophisticated and integrated single ego that acts across time and in the social environment. And, you know, when Piaget originally started talking about <coughs> child development, he regarded the child as something that was born into the world with just a set of very primordial reflexes, mostly sucking reflexes and some primary motor reflexes. He was a, very much a constructionist, but I would say, you know, had he been alive now, his constructionism would have been modified, modified by the relevant neurophysiological data showing that there's a lot more built into us right from the beginning than Piaget expected. You still might need experience to catalyze the development, but obviously children are born with the ability to hear and to see and to sense with touch, and they're hungry and tired and angry, and like they have the whole range of emotions at hand, and they also come into the world with their motivation already in place. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to form a relationship with them. And that's modified by the development of the higher cortical systems through play and through social negotiation. But the biology is there to begin with. And so that's, that's, a, that's a good way to think about it.